The first thing we'll do is define the machine that will be used to mill this part. I'll switch to the CamWorks Feature Tree tab here to get started. This tree is used to specify the machine and the stock that will be used to machine parts. Later we'll see how this tab can also be used to control the parameters of each feature in the part. This is the icon that will be used to define the machine, tool definitions, and the post processor. By default, I have a machine called Example Mill Inch selected to machine this part. The Feature Tree here behaves just like the Feature Manager Tree in SolidWorks. If I right click, I can select Edit Definition to make changes, or I can simply double click the Machine node. This is the Machine dialog box. To fully define the machine we will be using, we'll be navigating through each of these tabs from left to right. Here on the Machine tab, you can see a list of available Mill, Turn, Mill Turn, and Wire EDM machines. These machines and their properties, shown at the bottom, are loaded in a technology database in CamWorks. Later in the section called Setting Up CamWorks, I'll show you how to modify the database to include the particular machines in your facility. For now, I'll use Example Mill Inch. So, I'll click Select. Under the Tool Crib tab, you can choose a tool crib, which is a set of tools that are used with the machine you've chosen. I'll choose one of the predefined tool cribs by selecting it at the bottom of this window. These are not all the tools available from the technology database, just a subset that represents the actual tools in your facility. Here, you can add, remove, and edit the tools in this tool crib. I'll click Add to bring up the Tool Selection dialog box. Since there are thousands of tools in the database, these selection filters can help you browse to the exact tool you're looking for. I'll filter only drills between 0 and 1 half inch in diameter. When I press OK, you'll see the tools that meet the criteria. I'll highlight this tool here and press OK. Now when I scroll to the bottom, you'll see the tool has been added to the list. To edit the parameters of this tool, I can highlight and select Edit. Here are all of the tool's parameters that you can modify in case one from the database doesn't match the exact tool you're working with. Note that all of the changes we've made here in this tool crib will only take effect in this part. These custom settings will be saved with the part and not globally in the database. Later, I'll show you how to modify tool cribs globally in the technology database to take effect on all parts. Next, I'll switch to the Post Processor tab. This tab is used to define the post processor that will be used. The post processor controls the format of the NC or G code output. CamWorks has several post processors built in, which display here. If I know the file path for my post processor, I can input it directly, or I can use the Browse button to locate it. If for any reason the post processors do not display, use the Browse button to locate the folder that contains files with a .ctl extension. For this lesson, we'll use this post. At the bottom, you can see the parameters of the post and a short description. Under the Posting tab, you can enter information that will be specific for this program that will appear on the Setup sheet when we output our G-code. The coolant settings can be defined from the tool itself or from the post processor. The same applies to the tool diameter or length offsets. These options allow you to define whether the values that are output in the code are set in the post processor or from the tool itself. We'll take a look at how to customize these values later in this course. Since we're working with a 2.5 axis milled part in this lesson, the setup tab and rotary axis and tilt axis tabs do not apply. To continue, I'll click OK to accept the selections for this machine and move on to define the stock we'll be using. 